Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary. On Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary, paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down, O oh glory. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down from heaven. Go and show and show and show and tell the world around. Go preach it and tell it today. Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the evening services for Sunday, February the 26th. For usual, we'll be singing several songs. We sing from songs of faith and praise. I will give you the name and number of the song so that uh, if you don't have that book, you can either Google it or maybe you have a book that has that title and you can sing along with us. Uh, also, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be useful to you. So if you would turn your song books to number 770, the title of the song is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, number 770. <clears throat> Dear Lord and Father of mankind, forgive our foolish ways. We clothe us in the rightful mind in pure lives. Thy service find in deeper reverence, praise. In simple trust like those who heard beside the Syrian sea, the gracious calling of the Lord led us like them without a word. Rise up and follow me. Oh, Sabbath rest by Galilee. Oh, come of hills above. Where Jesus now to share with thee. The silence of eternity interpreted by love. Drop thy still dews of quietness till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. That was lovely. Turn to number five. 95, I come to the garden alone, an old favorite, 595. <coughs> right. We'll sing the first three verses and then the chorus. The first three verses and then we will sing the chorus. 595, I come to the garden alone. <coughs> I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses He speaks at the sound of His voice it's so sweet, the birds hush their singing. 
and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. And before the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 366, By Christ Redeemed. 366, By Christ Redeemed. Redeemed. By Christ redeemed in Christ restored, we keep the supper of the word and show the death of our dear Lord until he come. His body given in our stand is seen in this memorial brand. And as we drink, we see the blood until we come. And thus that dark betrayal night, with the last advent we unite, by one bright chain of loving right until he comes. This is the part of our evening worship service that we observe the Lord's Supper. We are commanded to do this on the first day of the week, every first day of the week. Acts chapter 20, verse 7 very specifically tells us that on the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. Jesus uh, initiated this in the night in which he was betrayed when he gathered at the table with his disciples. The Apostle Paul in the 11th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, almost word for word, explained to us also what observing the Lord's Supper was all about. We take the bread which is symbolizing the body of our Lord. We take the fruit of the vine, symbolizing his blood. We think of the sacrifice that was made. He explained to his disciples, therefore explained to us what this sacrifice was all about. He explained that it was a one-time sacrifice, that no longer would uh, the, the people have to sacrifice animals because he was the perfect sacrifice. And he uh, told us that in that he would be the eternal high priest and he would be sitting at the right hand of God. So as we gather, let's memorialize the death and uh, the burial of our Lord Jesus Christ as we partake of the emblems. Let's pray for the bread. We're so grateful, dear Heavenly Father, that in your divine plan that you sent Jesus here to earth as a human being, that he was the son of God and the son of man at the same time. It is that son of man that suffered on the tree. He felt all the pain that every man could probably, could possibly feel. And so as we partake of this bread, we remember how painful uh, those nails must have been in his hands and in his feet, how painful must have been to have that sword 
uh, pierced uh, into his side. I just pray that we can be grateful for that sacrifice and understand that he did it all for us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We also remember at this time, dear Heavenly Father, the blood that ran from Jesus' opened wounds, the life-giving blood that has it drained from his body, uh, the life drained from his body also. We are so grateful for this blood because we understand that it is the blood of our salvation. It is the blood through which our sins are forgiven. Help us as we partake to remember uh, the wonderful sacrifice uh, that Jesus uh, withstood for each one of us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We have completed the Lord's Supper, but as a matter of convenience at this time, we do something that also we're commanded to do on the first day of the week, and that is to lay by in store. Lay by in store means to make a plan to give back to the Lord. Uh, we're not commanded to tithe anymore, but it does tell us to give as we have prospered. And uh, if we have prospered well, we should give well. If we uh, have uh, laid by in store that will be reflected in our gift back to the Lord. Let's pray for the offering. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to understand that you love a cheerful giver. Help us to give with gratitude. Help those that use these monies to use them for the benefit of your work here on earth, that others would come to the Lord. Help us that it would benefit other works that we perhaps are not uh, personally associated with, that, but are going on around this country and around the world. Help us to use those monies in the proper way. Help us also to be a benevolent people that we can give to those that are in need. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And the last song that we'll sing before the lesson is number 777. Father, hear the prayer we offer. 777. Father, hear the prayer we offer. <clears throat> Father, hear the prayer we offer. Nor for ease that prayer shall be, but for strength that we may ever live our lives courageously. Not forever by still waters would we idly quiet stay. But would smite the living fountains from the rocks along our way. Be our strength in hours of weakness. In our wanderings be our guide. Through endeavor, failure, dangers, Father, be Thou at our side. Let our path be bright or dreary, Storm or sunshine be our share. May our souls in hope unweary make thy work our ceaseless prayer. I know the Lord was glorified through our singing. I hope you got to sing along with us and I pray that uh, uh, I will have something to say to you that will be beneficial. You may have noticed that the uh, theme 
of the lesson was about prayer. And if we turn to Psalm chapter 20 and verse 4, uh, we have the words of King David. It is uh, Psalm chapter 20 and verse 4, if you want to turn to that. It says, May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. Let me read, let me read that again. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. What was David doing here? Well, it, it's, it's my slant on this and my take on this that he wished for a significant blessing from God. All right? A significant blessing. He said, may he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your par purpose. May he grant from your heart's desire. That's what our prayers are all about, aren't they? They have to do with our heart's desire. And so when we pray, we need to look deeply into our hearts. And <laughs> this is, this is rather important. We should be very, very careful of what our desires are. Hmm. Why? Because God can look deeply into our hearts. He knows what we're thinking. He knows what our heart's desires are. And so, um, if we look deeply into our own hearts and we're careful about our desires, this is something that we must do for God is quite likely to grant us our heart's desire. If our heart's desire is aligned with what he wants out of us in our lives, ultimately, that is the only thing that he will grant. Hmm. If that sounds provocative, it should be. It is a part of what our prayer life is all about. In the long run, that, I believe, which we receive from God will turn out to be the thing we've most honestly and deeply wanted. Not those various things that we maybe even pretended to want. To root those out and get to those significant things that we most honestly and deeply desire. You know, our God and our Creator cannot be manipulated. He can't be manipulated by whims and by impulses, nor can He be manipulated by superficial requests. Rather, he acts on the basis of what he sees when he looks into the very depths of our true will, when he looks into the depths of our hearts. That's why David said, may he grant you according to your heart's desire, that desire that you have within you. Why? So the rest of the verse explains it so that it will fulfill all your purpose. Now, you know what? I know there are folks out there, me included, that are sometimes disappointed in the results of prayer. Now, I've heard it explained away uh, very, very 
uh, quickly by saying we prayed for something and God said no, or God said no, not now. If sometimes we're disappointed in the results of prayer, the explanation is often that God has yielded to the course we're actually demanding to follow rather than give us what we're praying for. It's not the, the demands, but it's what we're actually praying for. We pray, for example, for spiritual strength. And we hope, because we're praying for it, that we receive it. Well, what if we don't feel like we've received that physical strength? Hmm. Does God know that despite our requests, we're not willing to make the sacrifices that real spiritual strength would require? Because if we're going to become spiritually stronger, we have to make some sacrifices in our lives. And <laughs> it's almost as if we're saying to God, I'm praying for a little bit of character in my life. And, and I, I want you to just tack it on to my life, even though I'm not going to change my lifestyle. I don't think this is what our real desire, our heart's desire is all about. It's not, you know, tweak my character, even though I'm not going to change the way I live. If that's the case, God is not in the business of granting these kind of wishes. Repentance is about change. It's not just about sorrow. Repentance is godly sorrow. It, it's the difference in saying I'm sorry and then going back and doing exactly the same thing and saying I'm sorry and I'm going to do my very, very, very best not to do those things that you were dissatisfied with me. And so God isn't in the business of granting those kind of wishes. Because he will, because God loves us, he will probably leave us sometimes to that spiritual, something like we call the, the school of hard knocks a little while longer. Why? So that we will understand what we truly desire a little bit better. And that's what's so important understanding those true desires. And it is because he loves us. We discipline our children because we love us, love them, not because we hate them. That's what discipline is all about. Discipline is done in love. And sometimes God disciplines himself. I won't, I won't cave into your little whims. I won't, I won't cave in, uh, to those, those little things. I won't cave in to you, uh, by you saying, uh, you know, I, I want this, but I'm really not going to change. Now, in the end, uh, C.S. Lewis, who wrote the book Mere Christianity, remarked, that there are two different kinds of people in the world. See if you agree. There are two classes of people. Those who have said to God, your will be done. And those to whom God will say, your will be done. Even now, there are only these two classes of people. Whatever comes out of our prayers will reflect this reality. Please understand, Jesus as the Son of God 
and as the son of man, wanted the cup of dying on the cross to pass from him if it could have been. Even though he knew in his heart of hearts this this was not the desire of God that uh, Jesus would have to be sacrificed for mankind. And so when all was said and done, Jesus said, I, I wish that this cup would be passed, but thy will be done. We use, we have to use Jesus as our role model in our prayers. I am going to try with all of my heart to express my heart's desires to you, O oh God. But in the end, it's your will that will be done. And this is the reason why, at least I believe, I think, this is the principle this is the principal reason that God desires us to pray persistently, continuing to make our requests, even when it seems he's not listening. Let's take a look at Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. This was Jesus' parable on prayer. Luke 18, 1 to 8. Now, he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, In a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city. She kept coming to him, saying, <clears throat> Give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect man. Yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. Hmm. And the Lord said, Hear what the righteous judge said. Now will not bring, will not God bring about justice? for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, he will find faith on the earth. The point is not that God has to be begged to be good to us. It's more that he desires us to learn for ourselves. As a teacher, I found out that one of the things that we teach is for children to learn on their own. It's for them to learn about themselves. Why am I doing this? Why is this important to me? And perhaps through the, maybe even the long agony of prayer, we need to understand that what we're conveying to God are our heart's desires. He waits for us to want in and of our hearts that we may have prayed for him through our lips. The words that we utter are those words that come from our hearts. They are the words that reflect our heart's desire. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. To that end, in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray without ceasing. In Philippians chapter 4, it says, be anxious in nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. God wants to hear these requests, but he wants them to be our heart's 
desire, not whims, not uh, something that, you know, we just pulled out of the air, not impulses, not superficial requests. He wants to know what our, our, what our true heart's desires are so he can fulfill those hearts, those, those desires, those desires that come from our hearts. Because remember, in uh, Philippians 4, 6, it continues to say with prayer by thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And then he finishes it by saying, the peace that passes all understanding or all comprehension will guard your hearts. It's what we're looking for the ultimate peace in our lives. And the peace in our lives comes when we understand that in this relationship with God, God will give us the things that we desire if they come from our hearts. The great writer John Bunyan put it this way. When you pray, rather let your heart be without words than your words without heart. God is looking for your heart in the words that you speak. That's when he grants our heart's desires. I hope this message was beneficial to you. I hope that uh, you gleaned something from it. If you have any questions about it, you can always get back to me. Uh, I'm willing to share my time with you so that uh, maybe I could clear up anything or any misconception that you might have. It's wonderful to be a child of God because God listens to the prayers of his children when those prayers come from their hearts. Understand that uh, it is God's children whose prayer he hear, hears. If you're not yet a child of God, if you haven't understood what your salvation is all about, that you haven't come to God uh, through confession that his son Jesus is the son of the living God. If you haven't said, I'm going to change my lifestyle, I'm going to make that sacrifice because that's what you want me to do and repent of my former life and then ultimately be baptized for the remission of your sins. That's when you start your Christian walk. And that's when I believe that God is tender to our prayers. If you haven't started your walk yet, we offer this opportunity to you. If you need to come to the Lord, please do this evening. And if you, you need to and you feel the, the need right at this time, get in touch with one of us and we will be there to help you. Let's pray as we close this service. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we got to spend together this evening. Help us to understand that our relationship uh, with you is based on the communication that we have with you. The communication that we have through your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. Who made the perfect sacrifice for us. And because of that perfect sacrifice, that we can approach you as our God. And that we can pray through your son. Bless us. Dear Heavenly Father, as we go on our Christian walk, help us that that walk might be down the paths that you would have us to walk, that your word would be a light to our path. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father. Help us as we uh, uh, go to sleep at night and wake in the morning to have you on our minds and in our hearts. Can you continue to bless us Help us always to look forward to the next time that we get to be together. Help us to study your word more, to show us the way that we are to go. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all. Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary. On Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary. Paved the way by blood that we might wear a bright shining crown. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, glory. Praise the Lord. the Lord. Salvation has been brought down from heaven. Go and show and shout. Go and shout and tell the world around. Go preach it